Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening process. And today I'm going to share with you five habits that every empath should start doing now. Habit number one, make it a habit of releasing your own baggage. A lot of empaths I talk to, they, they really, uh, they, they condemn the world they live in. They don't like it. A lot of contention and resistance to the negativity. And I agree. I, it's totally, it is a dark realm we live in. I agree. The nature of humankind is oftentimes very dark and polarized. But as a person, as an individual, we are magnets for negativity so long as we carry negativity within our own vessel and our own being and our own consciousness. So the faster you can unload your own baggage, your own negativity, your own darkness, the less frequently you will need to reflect and attract negative people and scenarios into your life. They are nothing but reflections of you. I for a long time was caught up in the identity of the empath with sort of a victim mindset. Like I'm so sensitive, I really just don't like people here and I get like that too. I'm not trying to say I'm some sort of like, uh, you know, I'm above that. It's hard oftentimes to look around in the world and just how people treat one another and not feel anger and frustration and even hopelessness at times. But I found that the more work I've done on myself, the less I experience like actual uh, like obvious encounters with negative characters and also the less emotionally triggered and affected I am by negativity in general. It's not like I left the world and everything's bliss, but I'm no longer, my sensitivity is still high, but I'm no longer triggered and it no longer penetrates. It's more of just an observation. And that's a growing process. And again, it just gets better and more easy, easy, uh, easier the more I unload within myself. Number two is I would say it's essential for an empath, and I know how difficult it can be, but I would highly recommend systematically carving out scheduling alone time. Just being a compassionate listener to anyone who comes in your path, it's draining. For a while, it is difficult to not pick up other people's bad vibes. And because you're such an open listener, people tend to, are, they're drawn to you and they might start talking about themselves quickly and, and spewing their life story at you. They pummel their fear at you and you just take it because you're nice and it's awesome and it's beautiful. But when you do that, it, oh, it makes you feel spent and then really annoyed with people. So I have found because managing my energy is still a work in progress, though I've improved tremendously, I found one of the best things I do is I schedule alone time, literally in my phone, I'm recording with my phone. I have now come to the point where I prioritize alone time or meditation time or time to just sit quietly and read. I prioritize that with any other appointments or engagements I have in my actual phone calendar. I make myself do it and it helps tremendously. Even though I'm taking more time to do nothing, I'm getting more done and I'm a lot happier and I do my whatever it is I do with more joy and more energy and I bring more of myself to the table. It is. I totally admit a challenge to be in, to be super sensitive in a world where there's a lot of negativity and bad vibes that is uncomfortable to feel and process. However, in acknowledging that we can act accordingly and do everything we can do to manage that to the best of our ability. And again, I think alone time for any empath is going to go a long way. It's time well spent. 
Number three is to get fit. Improve your physical fitness, improve your health. Eat healthier foods, weight train or do yoga or pick a form of exercise that you personally enjoy doing. And by strengthening your fitness level, essentially, on a fundamental level, however you wish to do it, there are many ways to do this, it will help you have more energy and feel more in control of your, your own energy field. But picking up stress literally will weaken your system. And we can pick up other people's stress and carry it around on our backs. And that just weakens us even more and makes us more just irritable and discontent and just have a, a, a less peaceful day-to-day -day existence. But if we strengthen our physical vehicle that we're currently trapped in for the time being, whether we like it or not, we are here. It is part of us. If we, if we honor that temple and strengthen it and, and build it up as best we can, not for vanity reasons, but just to feel better, to have more energy and vitality and life force flowing through us, it can go a, a really, really long way. And I made a mistake. For many years, I, I felt so sensitive and so exhausted that I did not, I thought the idea of exercise seemed like it would just be adding more stress and, and to a body that was already incapable of keeping up with the demands of life. And yet I found, even though that is in a sense literally true, exercise is stress, I was able to do it. And in improving my body, improving my fitness, it allowed me to process stress more efficiently. That's essentially what your body does when it adapts to any form of exercise. It, it processes and grows from and benefits from and strengthens itself from that source of stress. So on a fundamental level, you, you or your body gets better at processing and managing stress much more effectively. I saw this firsthand with my wife. My wife is like in her, she's like 32, she's a pretty young lady and we have three children. And as I, we, uh, I was a trainer for most of my life. So she naturally started working out. You know, we just kind of have always worked out together since we've been dating. And anyway, over the years, she's gotten herself in better and better and better shape, better fitness levels. Um, and each kid, she recovered faster, which makes less sense because it's, it's more of a shock to your older body the, the older you get as you, as you pop out babies, basically. Um, and our third child, she recovered so quickly that all of the doctors, all the nurses were just like blown away. They said they've never seen someone recover from a C-section so fast. And it's because she was fit. Her body was able to heal itself quickly because she's trained it to do so. Anyways, that was, again, I, once I started to exercise after that period of a few years where I felt really beat up and just like, you know, bogged down from the, the heaviness of the world, it made a tremendous difference. Number four, I was talking to a guy, my, one of my clients just yesterday. He was saying, he was explaining to me a lot of like the, the problems he was having being an empath. He's like, what do I do when I, he was saying, when I go to a carnival with my kids and the energy is just heavy and negative and it exhausts me and it makes me feel uncomfortable, how, what do I do? It's, it's an interesting predicament. I, I, I uh, agreed and acknowledged. I said, well, on one hand, you cannot go, but you have these kids that want to go and you should, you should allow them to do that, obviously. That, that was what he did. But... I was explaining to him that you don't have to suffer that much. You can acknowledge and observe and recognize that it's a less than conducive energy field for you to be in for a little while, but you don't have to allow it to stick to you the way so many empaths I find do. And the way to do that is very simple, not always easy. That is to be as much as possible in a constant state of allowance. The world is dark people suck okay I allow it I accept it because the resistance of it it causes it to stick and affect me that is how I have gotten to a point where I am I would say like you know it's I, I can't put it in the terms but there was a point where going into public being around negative people going into busy stores I, I would be wiped out all day and now it affects me, but really not that much. I can handle those same situations. I'm still more sensitive. I haven't blocked myself off or anything because 
for one, number one is I continue to unload my baggage, but primarily because I allow it. I accept the nature of people. I try to look at human beings who are negative with compassion because I know as I've unloaded my own baggage, I had quite a bit too and I still do. And that's okay. I can look at them and feel for them. I know how miserable it is to carry around the heaviness of that accumulation of karmic baggage and emotional trauma and pain that no one was taught how to unload. So just that mindset shift of acceptance and even with, with that comes a natural feeling of compassion oftentimes, it allows their energy to be just seen and not felt. Lastly, something that will make you feel good, it'll make your heart sing, and I think we can all agree the world needs it, is to as often as possible consciously radiate love out there into the planet. Have good intentions. They say, uh, when I was going through my AA 12 steps, and I think they even talk about this in, in like Christianity, to, to pray for the people who have wronged you. Pray for those who you resent. Well, in our case, many times it's people in general. Pray, ex emanate positive intentions for them. And you will feel good. It will feel right to you. It's the exact opposite of resentment and resistance. And it feels light and it feels like it actually does something. In fact, that reminds me, I want to mention to you guys, I might mention this in a few videos, something I'm going to be personally doing and I invite you to join if you want, if this resonates, every Saturday morning at 11, 11 a.m. Pacific, I'm going to spend 10 minutes meditating, just wherever I'm at, even if I'm with people, in my mind, I'll be in my mind, intending good energy, positive energy, radiating as much love as I can muster up into the planet as a whole. And I think if a lot of us can make the habit of doing that, it'll be a co-creative, synergistic effort and blast of positivity into the world that many of us are fed up with looking at. That'd be something that we could do together weekly to help change that on an energetic level. So that's, that's, my, that's my, uh, one of the things, again, I'm going to be doing. 11, 11 a.m. Pacific time, every Saturday radiating positive love. I'm not going to do it on camera. I'm not going to do it any, in a, any form of way, but I will be doing that at that exact time every week and I invite you to as well. So anyways, my friends, I hope this video helped you. I know it's not easy being an empath, but again, I have found that accepting my situation and then being proactive and solution oriented, having a solution oriented mindset, I've been able to really manage the situation pretty effectively. And it is my hope that you do as well. Have an amazing day. I will speak to you soon. Namaste.